Hello, my name is Diana Cody, and I'm here to talk to you about goals for reducing CT dose, protocol parameters, dose check, and nomenclature standardization. AAPM, AAPM stands for the American Association of Physicists in Medicine. This working group is co-chaired by myself. My name is Diana Cody from MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, and by Cynthia McCullough, who's from the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. The charge of this working group is twofold. First, we want to develop consensus protocols for frequently performed CT examinations, summarizing the basic requirements of the exam and giving several model-specific examples of scan and reconstruction parameters. Secondly, we want to develop a set of standardized terms for use on CT scanners. The membership of this working group is critical to the success of the whole. So membership includes several senior physicists from around the country who represent sort of different perspectives. Mike McNett Gray is from UCLA. Bob Pizzicello runs a large consulting firm in, uh, in the Northeast. Dustin Gress used to be a consulting physicist and now works with me at MD Anderson. Jim Kofler is also at the Mayo Clinic with Cynthia. Mark Zapanich is from Henry Ford Hospital in Michigan, and Michael Hurd. From the ACR, we, and the ACR stands for the American College of Radiology, we have Mark Armstrong, Penny Butler, and Dina Fernandez. They all have very specific CT experience to share with the group. From the American Society of Radiologic Technologists, we have Virginia Lester, who gives us very often an invaluable technologist viewpoint of whatever issues we're discussing. From the Federal Drug Administration, we have Thalia Mills, who's been wildly productive, especially in the lexicon part of this um, group. We would get very, <laughs> we would get nowhere without the help of our manufacturer representatives. Each of the seven major CT manufacturers has identified one person to ask to act as a member of this working group, and they've been absolutely critical to the success uh, and the productivity of the group moving forward. So those seven manufacturers are shown there along with each uh, representative. In addition, there's a group called MIDA. Uh, this is sort of an umbrella group that helps get those uh, seven manufacturers together and develop standards that then can be implemented across the board. Additional members that we've added to the working group as needed include our pediatric protocol experts, Melodowski and Sajirk Westra, and a couple of DICAM experts. DICAM is the structure of the image file, and it's very useful often to get uh, perspective from that quarter. The scanner protocols that we've developed undergo a very rigorous peer review process. And the idea is to provide a reference that sites all over the country can use to see if, to compare against their technical parameters and to see if they're reasonable or not. It's this reasonableness that we were after. We're not specifically looking for optimized, not perfect, not low dose, not the best image quality ever, but what is a reasonable combination of parameters for each of these scanner models to use for these different types of exams. This material is publicly available on the AAPM website, www.aapm.org. Once you go to that website, you will see something like this. Uh, what you see Underneath my name is material that's specific to me, but no matter what shows up there on the lower left-hand corner, you will see a button that says CT Protocols. If you hit that button, you will eventually, you might have to go through a disclaimer or two, wind up at a page that looks like this with these tabs across the top. You're looking for the tab that says Protocols on it, and 
that will bring you to a spot that looks like this where we show the currently available protocols that are there for you to look at online. Right now we have the routine adult chest, the routine adult abdomen pelvis, the routine adult head, and the routine adult brain perfusion protocols that are publicly available for whoever would like to look at them. If you click on any of those, you will see first a descriptive text that covers the indication for the exam, the diagnostic task, key elements, any issues regarding dose management, sometimes there's material in there about patient positioning and contrast administration. So these are some sort of overview umbrella items that um, we thought were important. And the brain perfusion protocol, there's also some example images because this protocol was a little bit different than the rest. But at some point, you will drill down and get to the vendor that you're interested in, and we have all seven vendors represented. But here you can see uh, a Siemens page, and then a GE page, Philips page, and a Toshiba page. And what we've done is make sure that these tables represent the terminology that you will actually find on those scanner models so that you won't have to struggle with what does this parameter mean relative to the interface that I'm looking at. They should match up perfectly, so it should be very simple to compare this combination of parameters to the ones that you're currently using. The vendors, as you might imagine, are very, very anxious to get their latest and greatest models out there, and we're certainly supportive of that. But we also reminded them that there are a lot more scanners than are on the older side. And so each uh, vendor is allowed a certain number of model places so that we can sort of maximize the benefit here. So if you don't see the exact model you have on the first page, keep looking. It might be there if you're in a little bit deeper. So those four protocols are there now. The, uh, the next protocols that we're working on include the chest, abdomen, and pelvis combination, pediatric head CT, and coronary calcium scoring CT. On the to-do list, a little bit later, we will also add, we hope, uh, pediatric chest CT and pediatric abdomen and pelvis CT. In addition to the protocols, we were asked to help roll out this feature called CT Dose Check. This is a new META standard. Uh, and I remember META stands for Medical Imaging Technology Alliance. So this is one of these standard projects that's been developed by all of the vendors together and will be rolled out in a very standardized and systematic way amongst all of the CT vendors. This particular one, called CT Dose Check, is intended to serve as a safety feature on their newer scanners. There are two levels of dose checking, one that's called a dose alert and another that's called a dose notification. The dose alert is set at one gray for the cumulative amount delivered for an entire exam. Dose notification is, as I understand it, on a per beam on event, so that if you have a certain protocol that has one pass to it, you can set a notification value so that you will be notified, the technologist will be notified for any exam that is about to trigger that threshold. It's about to be higher than whatever number you, you've set there for that notification value. As far as I can tell, the scanners are delivered without any notification values. So this is something that the user actually has to actively go in and set and manage themselves. These dose check levels will be adjustable by the site, and it's actually very much encouraged and expected. And in the future, they may include some protocol parameter export features, but as far as I can tell, at this point, that part has not been implemented. 
So these are some of the dose alert notification error messages that will pop up if the technologist is about to perform an exam where the, the next beam on event will cause the cumulative dose for that exam to be with above that one gray alert limit. So what do you use for your notification values since you won't have any? Well, this working group has also come up with a, an initial suggested list of notification values. If we go back to that website and you look for the tab that says CT Dose Check and you press that, you will come to this page which basically will open a document that includes a table with some suggestion suggested notification values in it. So these are some values that you can use for CTDI ball as your notification values for some routine exams such as adult head, adult torso, pediatric head, pediatric torso, brain perfusion, and cardiac exams. These are not meant to be hard and fast written in stone. These are only suggested initial points. We totally encourage sites to expect to adjust these values over time. So the overall impact, the goal here, is to alert the CT technologist just before a relatively high dose exam is performed. Now what is considered relatively high may be very site specific. So these initial suggested notification values will likely need adjustment at every site in order to be useful because we expect some of these dose values to alter and change over time and we expect that your first stab at this may not be totally successful. If the notification process occurs too frequently, it will become something that's just very much ignored. And in that case, the notification value was set too low and it's not going to be very effective because it's going to be just another thing to get past. If, on the other hand, the dose notification never occurs at all, it won't be a safety measure either. And in that case, that would happen if the notification value was set too high. So there's going to be sort of a middle ground that each site is going to need to discover pretty much on their own and over time with experience. This particular feature was recommended by the Federal Drug Administration in response to the overexposure incidents that we've seen in the field of CT. And it will very likely require some careful consideration, regular review, and adjustments. You will see this feature starting to appear on newer CT scanner models. And there may be some initial startup um, settings that have to be input before it can actually be used. Another uh, goal of this particular working group has to do with CT nomenclature. Anyone who has worked at all in the field of CT, if they're paying attention, has gotten inordinately confused by the number of different terms that represent the same thing. Many vendors have developed very specific terminology sets for their scanners, and these uh, vocabulary words don't translate well from one vendor to another. This can make for major challenges for operators and for physicists and for radiologists who are facing the deployment of a scanner from a vendor that's new to them, because it's really, really difficult to get your hands around how you're going to set up protocols when the names don't seem consistent at all with what you're comfortable with. Our long-term goal as this working group is to try and get the vendors to work together in a manner that we can develop a common generic vocabulary of these parameter names. On the short-term side, we decided it would be very useful at least to develop an easily accessible translator or lexicon for our current CT terminology. This lexicon is, again, 
publicly available on the same website in the same area, go back to the part that has the tabs and look for the lexicon tab. And what you will see is a description of the tool and a link to download this as a PDF. It has a table of contents that's separated into many categories that you can see here. The very first one, Scan Acquisition and User Interface Basics, uh, looks like this. This is just the first few lines. But you can see that each vendor is represented as a column. And there's some generic description of the term on the left. And then what each vendor uses for that term is shown underneath their name. So for example, the third line down here says CT Localizer Radiograph. GE calls this a scout. Phillips calls this a surview. Siemens calls this a topogram. Toshiba calls it their scanogram. So does Hitachi. Newsoft calls it a surview. Neurologica also calls this a scout. So this is just one example of how easy it is to get confused with the different vendor terminologies. Most of this material was really developed by our FDA member, Thalia Mills, and we all owe her a debt of gratitude. This lexicon is pub publicly available. It's very useful when you're learning the ropes on a scanner that's new to your clinic. It helps for translating terms across vendors. And there you will find that there are some areas where they simply don't translate because they have very different core meanings. This can also be very useful for teaching points for technologists and others involved in CT. The working group has also taken on an additional goal. This is in addition to our two charges and in addition to the CT dose check uh, notification value list. We have, from uh, talking to our colleagues, decided that it would be really, really useful to develop some educational materials that would be publicly available for use anywhere. These uh, education materials are specific to radiation dose in CT. There is already a generic version that's available for download. In the future, we expect to post something that's very specific from each vendor so that we can more readily communicate how the different vendor terms can be adjusted and how those adjustments will then reflect impact on image quality and on radiation dose. We're in the process of reviewing those as we speak and so I imagine in the next few months they will start popping up on the website. The goal here was to really try and drill down and explain how the different acquisition parameters work. What can you expect to have happen if some particular parameter is increased or decreased? And what is the impact of each of these parameters on both image quality and radiation dose? This, if you look on the tab area, there is um, the last one. I just took this slide. So the last one is called Education Slides. Right now, there is a link to this slide set. That's called the AAPM Commuted to Computed Tomography Radiation Dose Education Slides. This has been put together for public use. So uh, please feel free to, to review this, to download it, to show it wherever it, it uh, is appropriate. That wraps up my talk on the APM CT Working Group. Thank you very much.